live from New York. It's your Yu-Gi-Oh! News, news Gio, with your host, Davinator1212. Welcome, good evening, I'm Davinator1212, and this is news Gio, your monthly Yu-Gi-Oh! News. Despite being the first news Gio of 2020, we have already seen what might be one of the biggest news Gio stories of the year. Konami has just announced that the impending sneak peek for the very next set of the game, Ignition Assault, will be the last sneak peek as we know them now. Along with the sneak peek news, we also got word of changes coming to the main sets of the game in the various rarities and card availability. The TCG also started the year off right with a massive sweeping ban list which destroyed the current metagame and has opened up us for what is hopefully not just going to be a uh, spiral to electric boogaloo. Big things are coming to Duel Links and Jason will have that story in a moment. All this and more on tonight's News Geo. The first story we will be discussing is the changes to the sneak peek structure, as well as, by extension, the changes to the main sets. After this weekend's sneak peek for Ignition Assault, no longer will you be able to go to your favorite OTS store the week before a set's release to buy your five booster packs. Sneak peeks will still continue, but not in this format. Instead, you'll be allowed to buy a normal 24 booster pack box of cards, a la what you'd be doing the next weekend. Granted, this is a better deal as far as bang for your buck because your five packs for $20 sneak peek was pretty much buying them just the price of loose packs. Presumably, your OTS store would be selling the box for what would be a discounted bulk price, like how you normally buy a booster box. The rest of the sneak peek will proceed as normal with various sealed tournaments and other fun sneak peek day stuff. As a quick editorial side note, I'm actually not sure how I feel about this because, granted, uh, spending $60 on what equivalents to uh, 15 packs really is not that great of a deal. Whereas I could spend $65.70 on 24 packs, which again is a much better deal. However, that is a lot more of an investment than I would normally do on a sneak peek. Most of the times I like to just go and buy my 5 packs just to, you know, see if I can pull any of the rare cards and do some trading to see if I can get any of the stuff that I want that is in the upcoming set. I don't go to an OTS store on Sneak Peek with the intent of spending like $70, at least not normally. Now I don't have the option, which is interesting, I guess. However, there is changes to the main set structure which may make buying that booster box a little bit more incentivized. According to a release from Konami, we are no longer having rare cards in every pack. The rarity is being discontinued. Rare being the silver lettered cards you get one of in every pack. These will most likely either be absorbed into the super or commons, but does not change the overall number of cards in the set. I don't, I don't really care about this one. Uh, rare is, is barely foil as it is, and like, I don't know. Half the time it just makes necessary play sets of them just kind of just annoying enough to get a play set of when if they were just commons maybe you, you'd just have them and you wouldn't have to like dig around for these stupid things. This makes sense. They're barely rare as it is. Why even have them? Also, according to the press release, they are no longer going to be short printing cards. The News Guild Network takes this to mean no longer will we have short print commons, which are very hard to pull, as well as certain secret ultra and supers that just don't appear in packs, despite the fact there is an actual ratio to the various rarities, i.e. pulling all Zarks when you wanted something else. The card you wanted and the card you keep getting are both secret rare, but it's very clearly that they are not the same rarity. Which really begs the question as to why we even have various rarities as it is if the cards that are truly rare are the same rarity as cards that you pull every other pack. That doesn't actually make sense now that I think about it. All cards of equal rarity will now have equal chances of being pulled out of every pack, which is probably how it should always been. So buying that booster box on sneak peek day may actually offer the player bases access to the cards that they are looking for much quicker and in higher volume. And uh, to go into a bit of an opinion piece about this change, 
This is actually, I really like this, um, dropping the News Geo annotation in my voice for a minute. I think this might actually inspire people to buy packs of cards as opposed to just buying loose cards because now, I mean, it's still not a great odds, but you still have a better odds of pulling the cards you want out of a pack than you did before, presumably if, you, if, if what you were looking for was a chase card. Meaning with more people buying packs because the chance of getting the cards you want are at better odds means that the supply of cards in the market will be better and hopefully the people who still want to just buy singles will have to be spending less because more packs are being opened because there is now more an incentive to do so. I really hope that's the that's the that's what's going to happen because that would make everything cost less. It's also probably why Konami did it because they don't make money on the secondary market so it would make much more sense for them to incentivize people buying product like sealed stuff. Okay. We now pass it off to Jason for his analysis of the upcoming changes to our favorite mobile game. Jason? What's going on, Duel fans? It's Ty Wolf, your friendly neighborhood super beast, and I welcome you back to this year's first edition of the Duel Links Corner. With New Year's comes new changes, and here at the Duel Links Corner, there is no example. The first change, I'm going to let you know right now what I say. There is no example. Damn it! <laughs> There's a big change is coming, but not really, so never mind. <laughs> Forget I said anything. <laughs> With the new year comes a lot of new changes. And the first change I'm going to tell you right now is we're not going to talk about what happened last month. We're going to talk about what's happening in the future. So in February, we're going to have a new event called the GX Chronicles. We already did it, ain't gotta explain much more about it. The next one, we're actually gonna get the opportunity to earn Blair Fanagan. If you didn't play her the first time, long story short, she's gonna give you a Maiden, and she'll give you some actual Light Swarms. Now, the Light Swarms has always been a deck favorite, so I would suggest getting her anyway. And the second big change is gonna be me. Yo, what's up, Duel Link fans? It's your boy, Junior, and Papa? <laughs> Are you really doing this to me right now? Hey, yo, Jason, you're black, right? Yeah. Does that mean I can say the N-word? Yo, what up, my dude? Here at the Davinator 1212 channel, we apologize for that previous uh, skit. As I was saying, we're just going to continue with the events, going over the tier list, and that's going to be it, because I'm going to have to hurt somebody. Am I your stand master of puppets? Watashi no Oshiri okay? Before I was so rudely interrupted, now we're going to talk about the actual big event coming up in February. It's actually going to take place in the span of 10 days starting the 6th. It's going to be the KC Cup. So if you want to prepare for the KC Cup, I'm going to tell you the top tier 3 decks so that you know what to prepare for or what to use playing going forward. We're going to start off with the tier 3. Dropping down from tier 2, unfortunately, is the Ritual Beast deck. With all the support that happened within the sets that they were released in, you know, they're becoming highly defiant. Next is going to be the tier 2 list, where we have pretty much a four-way tie. We gimmick puppets? Is it gimmick puppets? Ah, oh, hell, they ain't even in Duel Links. I just want to make that stupid joke. <laughs> <laughs> now beginning with the tier 2 list, we're going to start off by talking about Element Sabers. Dick Lords. My personal favorite, the Dark Magician. And lastly, we got to talk about the Black, black Wangs, man. Why are these all about black dick? And finally, we're going to tell you the tier one list, which is the Shira Nui's. Them and zombies! Yes, the zombies. Well, that's going to do it for the Duelings Corner today. If you excuse me, I'm going to go kill somebody in the back. Wait, no, don't go! Okay, um, uh, well, I'm your boy, Junior, and this has been the Duel Links Corner, and peace out, my Nick. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get so much mileage out of that puppet. The final story for the night, and arguably probably the biggest, would have to be dealing with the TCG ban list released just last week. This sweeping ban list saw many changes to various cards and their card levels, as well as was very specifically targeted at hitting the top tier decks. It was very much a January ban list, meant to inspire people to buy new product and start the year off with new decks and new Yu-Gi-Oh! At this point, I'm sure most players are aware of the changes, so we are just going to talk about some of the interesting highlights and what they mean moving forward. 
there was actually many cards moved to the actual ban list itself. However, these few are definitely the ones that are the most important because they have clearly something to do with what decks were being targeted this time around. Sky Striker Mobilize Engage, Thunder Dragon Colossus, Orcist Harp Horror, and Salamangrate Mirage Salio. Putting these cards to zero definitely hurts every single deck that these things were part of. Sky Striker's Lost Engage, which was arguably probably one of the best cards in the game, and certainly the best card in their deck, destroying their consistency and their ability to get moving. Thunder Dragons lost their boss monster, a walking mistake, which was pretty much the entire point of even wanting to play the deck. Orcist and Orcist combo decks lost Harpoor, which was arguably probably one of the best cards in the main deck of that deck, actually making your plays. The other cards moved to zero all seem to come off as they were preparation for the master rule revisions because uh, moving forward it's going to be much easier to have various kinds of extra deck monsters on the board so we need to be careful with the ones that are available to us. The cards limited this time around all definitely seem to have decks they are specifically targeting mostly the same deck, True Draco. <laughs> Diagram into the Void and Card Demise are all placed at one, which is a massive hit to that rogue strategy. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why they did this, it's not like that deck was causing lots of problems. Granted, I hate playing against it, but that's kind of a personal opinion thing, not... I don't think it was really a problem, but... I mean, okay. But True King with the Gasm the Disaster came back to one, so upcoming Earth decks actually have him to utilize, which is neat, uh, which is probably mostly why at least a diagram was, was limited as well, just to kind of balance that whole thing out. Give a little, get a little. The other cards put to one were uh, mostly just random things, like Sekka's Light and Red Reboot. I have no idea why they did that one, but okay, sure. But it is neat to see Pot of Avarice back at 1, even though I'm not sure it'll do anything. Semi-limited cards are certainly a very interesting thing in Yu-Gi-Oh! because a lot of times they are, uh, putting cards to 2 doesn't seem to do very much. Either it doesn't hurt the card's consistency at all due to the effect of the card, or it ruins the way the card works and you might as well have put it to 1 or banned it. 2 is a, it's a, it's a clumsy thing. However, the semi-limit list did see two new changes. That was the semi-limit of Deep Sea Diva and Tour Guide from the Underworld. Soon. Soon. Funny enough, both of these cards seemingly do exactly the same thing. Summon them, they summon a friend from the deck. With the upcoming rule revision change, having Tour Guide go to two does boost consistency of various rank 3 XC decks, certainly Burning Abyss, while still blowing your normal summon, but it's nice to have those tools. Deep Sea Diva, for a very similar, but decidedly different reason uh it's getting they're making it an archetype it's getting a bunch of cards so it's it's to sell packs that's not news but from a personal opinion i would have to say it's the unlimits which are actually probably some of the most interesting things about the list banning and limiting and semi-limiting all the best decks in the game is just an obvious function of the ban list but the unlimits those are where the fun is because then it's like ooh, well what's good now such fun things include Lady Debug and Dark Arm Dragon. Lady Debug might be kind of an apology to Salads for the loss of their XC monster by at least giving them back their starter. However, uh, I don't know. We'll see. It's either going to do nothing and they're going to really want their XC or they're going to fix the problem and now they have three Lady Debug and it's probably not an even trade and it's going to be much better. Uh, like, I think they can use the Fire Fist Synchro. I don't know. It, this was a weird flip-flop. I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about it. But Dad is cool. Seeing these old school cards that were on the forbidden limited list for far too long that don't actually see much play. It's nice just to get them back at three. Is anyone going to play them? Probably not, but it's fun for those casual players who just want to play Teledad or something, and their favorite deck has been banned for way longer than it needs to. So, cool. Dad. Morphing Jar number two is certainly an interesting one. Now we have access to a couple of really dumb flip effect loops, which are probably not viable at all, but are certainly fun replays on YGO Pro. It, it cycles through for you. Solemn Morning getting put to three is also pretty interesting. Um, we had the rest of the Solemn Package Unlimited, so we might as well just have this. Cool. I actually like Solemn Morning. It's probably my favorite one. And my favorite Unlimit for the entire thing is Book of Moon. Haha! <laughs> you can... I told you, flip effect loops. Yeah, but seriously, it, it's a long time coming. It doesn't even work against Link monsters. I don't even know why it's at, at, at one as long as it was. Um, it's a neg one, so it's bad card economy. However, an at will flip face down for the quick effect is just really neat. And there's tons of strange interactions that happen when you can put a monster face down. So having that as a tech option at three is certainly just, a, it's just fun Yu-Gi-Oh. 
And that wraps up our story about the current ban list. Thank you for joining us tonight for this January edition of News Geo 2020. Join us next month during February's News Geo for something. <laughs> Valentine's Day. Blech. It'll be fun. We'll figure something out. I'll probably just harass Jason more. <laughs> as the huge. But thank you for joining us tonight. I have been Davinator122, and, and this has been NewsGeo. I hope you enjoyed tonight's stories, and I will see you guys next time. Ah, don't you know what to do? Think all you like, you're still gonna stomp that subscribe button. Make sure to watch these other videos. Come on, quit stalling fossilizing over here. Slow play. Judge!